Hey everyone, so this is a video for review of inner ear histology. Um, this PowerPoint was made a couple years ago uh, for Unit 6 Histology and it's really good. I highly recommend you check it out. It's on our uh, academic Facebook group and I'll be referencing it as we go along. So this is a picture of the 3D structure of the inner ear and um, we're going to spend most of the time of this video looking at one particular virtual microscopy slide that's a cut roughly around here. And uh, we're going to spend most of the time on the cochlea since that's where uh, most of the action happens. And we'll talk a little bit about the vestibular system as well. And here are the axes of the slide that we're going to be looking at. So uh, the top of the slide is the anterior portion. Uh, to the right is lateral. That means the superior and inferior axis is coming out of the computer screen and going in. So that means we're either looking down or looking up at this uh, two-dimensional slice. So the cochlea is a structure that spirals around itself. So it uh, starts off thicker at the base, and as it uh, proceeds through the spiral, it gets uh, sm uh, thinner and thinner and, uh, until you get to the apex. And I really like this slide because it really shows you that uh, these cross sections of the cochlea, uh, it's one continuous structure that spirals around itself. And along the longitudinal axis of the cochlea, we have a structure called the modiolus. This is the thing that the cochlea is uh, spiraling, spiraling around. So as I mentioned before, uh, these structures with the three lumens uh, is part of the cochlea. So everything in between these lumens is part of the modiolus. So all of this stuff. So let's zoom in for a closer look. So the modiolus is uh, made up of a bony labyrinth. Uh, you can see uh, this material right here is bone. And just to convince you a little better, remember this? Should be flashback for unit two. This is what bone looks like, right? So if we go back here. So the bony labyrinth we've got, I mean, all of this material here is bone. Uh, this material between four and five is not bone, but here, here, uh, this stuff all looks like bone. And you can see it really does look like a labyrinth. All these other structures are kind of woven through it. And now let's talk about this large central structure here. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see these fibers running up and down. Uh, this is actually the cochlear nerve. It's not bone. Uh, these nuclei are uh, Schwann cells. So unlike the optic nerve, which is myelinated by um, oligodendrocytes, uh, the cochlear nerve is considered part of the peripheral nervous system, so it's uh, myelinated by Schwann cells. And if you trace the path of some of these uh, axon fibers back, you can see it's going in this direction. And if we take a look at the, these structures over here, we can actually see these are uh, neuron cell bodies, all of these guys. And whenever you have a collection of neuronal cell bodies like this um, in the PNS, this is called a ganglion. This in particular is called the spiral ganglion. And you'll see that each one of the cross sections here of the cochlea um, actually has its own piece of the spiral ganglion. And again, another great uh, picture from the PowerPoint showing that the spiral ganglion has continuous in a spiral fashion. So now let's talk about the cochlea itself. Um, so the three lumen here, we have the scala vestibuli the scala media, which is the same thing as the cochlear duct, and the scala tympani. The vestibuli and the tympani both have perilymph, and the media, or cochlear duct, has endolymph. And it's um, easier to appreciate the relationship between all these if we uh, talk a little bit about how sound is actually conducted through the cochlea. So sound waves go through the ear canal, it hits the tympanic membrane, uh, that vibrates the malleus and the incus and then the stapes. And the stapes is the little bone that uh, vibrates against what's called the oval window. And uh, just for reference, this photo is um, a depiction of what uh, the cochlea might be if you were to unravel the spiral and just stretch it out, like stretch it out this way. Uh, this part right here is the scala vestibuli. The bottom part is the scala tympani. And this uh, teal colored stripe is the um, scala media or the cochlear duct. And the sound waves travel in the direction of these arrows here. So you can see that uh, from the oval window, 
the sound waves will go through the scale of vestibuli, um, which is actually continuous with the scale, uh, scale of timpani at uh, the helical trema, that's where they um, uh, come together. And as the sound waves travel around, uh, this the basal membrane will wobble up and down depending on uh, how high the frequency of the sound is. Um, if it's a high frequency, it's going to be closer to the oval window. If it's a lower frequency, it's going to be farther away. Um, so, oh, by the way, this is from Dr. Colmar's lecture. Uh, if you want to see the animation, it's really good. It shows um, how the sound actually travels. So I re definitely recommend you take a look at that. And this pink strip here is the basal membrane. And uh, that wobbling up and down is actually what leads to um, uh, the neural signal. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And now we're going to look at one of these cochlear cross sections in a little more detail. Uh, the lab manual does recommend you use this one, but I actually like this one better, the larger one on the bottom left, uh, because uh, this is the diagram that we're going to use for reference, and it most closely um, resembles this uh, diagram here. So I'm going to zoom into this area right here. So the first thing I want to look at is this, which is Reisner's membrane. It separates uh, the scala vestibuli from the scala media. And you can see from this picture that it's a very thin membrane, but it does have uh, epithelial cells on either side of the membrane. And you can see that here on the slide as well. And now I'm going to talk about the stria vascularis and the spiral ligament. So the stria vascularis is this layer of epithelium. Uh, to the right side of this line. Um, it's the epithelium that's creating the endolymph, it's secreting it in this area. And the endolymph is kind of an interesting fluid because it's extracellular, right, because that's what the space is, um, and these are cells, but the makeup is kind of similar to intracellular fluid. So uh, normally you would expect inside of a cell to have uh, lots of potassium, very little uh, sodium, but actually um, there's a larger concentration of uh, potassium in the endolymph uh, compared to usual extracellular fluid. The perilymph, on the other hand, uh, which is in the vestibuli and the tympani, is uh, kind of similar to CSF. Um, and in terms of just memorizing the names, um, I think we have uh, two classmates named Peri in our year, so uh, that's how I'm going to remember these two are perilymph and this one's endolymph. And the stria vascularis is sitting on the spiral ligament. And the um, spiral ligament is this whole area here. Um, as far as I know, it's just there for support uh, for this to sit on and connect to the bone. All of this in the middle here makes up the organ of corti. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the spiral limbus um, and the uh, osseous spiral lamina. So if we zoom in, um, so the spiral ligament uh, tapers off really quickly into this right here, which is the uh, basilar membrane. Uh, if you remember, we mentioned before that this is the thing that bounces up and down when the sound wave comes in. And if we move past the organ of Corti, uh, we have this tissue here, which does look like bone. So this is the uh, osseous spiral lamina. So I'm going to draw the approximate boundary of it. And the manual describes it as uh, these two shells, these two bony shells. And in between are the axons of the um, uh, hair cells that are uh, traveling to the spiral ganglion. And then this structure here above the green line is the spiral limbus. I'm going to draw another green line uh, approximately to where the epithelium of the spiral limbus is. And the job of the epithelium of the spiral limbus is to secrete uh, this thing right here, which is the tectorial membrane, and uh, it looks like it's separated from the uh, outer hair cells here, uh, but normally it's actually supposed to be uh, attached. So I realize a lot of these structures sound very similar, uh, so I'm just going to run through how I memorize what everything is. Uh, so the spiral ligament, that's this right here, um, it's made of collagen, and just like any other ligament in the body, it's, it's there for support, right? So I picture this is uh, the support for the stria vascularis and just to uh, connect things. And now let's talk about the spiral limbus. So limbus in Latin means like edge or boundary and uh, this is kind of connecting a bunch of different structures. So the rhizos membrane is connecting here. Uh, it's connecting to uh, the modiolus through the 
uh, spiral lamina, and it's uh, connected to the organ of corti as well. Uh, and if you remember from um, uh, eye histology, the limbus or the corneal sclerolimbus is the junction between the cornea and the sclera. And finally, the osseous spiral lamina. Uh, so remember, uh, there's different kinds of bone. There's lamellar bone and woven bone. So that's how I remember um, spiral lamina is talking about these uh, two bony shelves here. And now let's talk about the organ of Corti using that picture from the lab manual as a guide. And first let's talk about these two cells right here. These are the pillar cells that uh, their cell bodies together form the tunnel of Corti in the middle. And on the slide itself, you can see these are the nuclei of the pillar cells. And this is the tunnel of Corti itself. Right next to the uh, tunnel of Corti, we have the inner hair cell, which is probably the most important cell here. Um, it's the one that actually responds to its particular frequency, and will send uh, the um, it'll send its action potential uh, through the axon in between the spiral lamina uh, and down towards the uh, cochlear nerve. And here's the inner hair cell on the actual slide. And now we can talk about the three outer hair cells. And their job is to amplify the signal that's uh, coming from the inner hair cell. And their axon projections will travel along with the rest here. On the slide itself, these are the three outer hair cells, uh, the nuclei of them, uh, plus three supporting cells for them. And remember that normally the tectorial membrane is actually attached to the stereocilia of the uh, outer hair cells, but the inner hair cell is not attached, it's actually free in the endolymph. And another usual thing, um, and another unusual thing about the organ of Corti, is that uh, so these are all epithelial cells, right? And normally epithelial cells will be attached to each other, and then on the apical side uh, it'll be facing a lumen of uh, fluid or air or whatever. Uh, but actually, in between here, you also have fluid. Uh, so these spaces are actually filled with uh, perilymph. And the apical side uh, that interfaces with the endolymph is called the cuticular plate. And this is a great slide to show you the direction of communication. So the um, neuron in the spiral ganglion is receiving input from the inner hair cell, and it's taking its information down into the cochlear nerve. So I realized that was a lot of different structures I talked about just now, so what I'm going to do is uh, this is the other side. Um, of the modiolus, and I'm going to run through each of these structures. Uh, but if you want to quiz yourself and just pause the video uh, before I go through the answers, uh, here's your chance. Alright, so I'm going to go in the same order. So we have one is Reiser's membrane, stria vascularis, spiral ligament, basilar membrane, five and six are the two shelves of the osseous spiral lamina. This is the spiral limbus the epithelium of the spiral limbus, which secretes the tectorial membrane. This is the inner hair cell. And the tectorial membrane, you can see, is actually attached to the stereocilia of these um, number 11, which is the outer hair cells, these three. And 12 and 13 are the pillar cells that are um, making the lumen of the tunnel of Corti. And just a quick note about how the signal that transduction actually happens at the hair cells. So remember the basilar membrane is the thing that uh, opens or moves up and down, right, um, from the sound waves. So so when that happens, the stereocilia can move back and forth, and these potassium channels are actually um, uh, held open and closed by this mechanical uh, link. So when this uh, moves up, uh, potassium can flood in because the channel is open more often and it will uh, cause a depolarization um, for this to uh, go to the uh, spiral ganglion. And Dr. Colmar's lecture has a really good animation showing this in action. Now let's talk about the vestibular system. So we talked a lot about the cochlea. Um, the vestibular system is right here. It's made up of the utricle and saccule. Uh, these two detect uh, your uh, position of your head as uh, horizontally and vertically. So uh, as you're walking forward, or you know, if you're um, taking a big dive on a roller coaster, that's what's going to be detecting it. And these yellow loops here are the semicircular canals, which are uh, they detect your head rotation. 
in all three planes. And if you look at our slide, uh, this right here is one of the semi uh, part of the semicircular canal, and this part right here is either the utricle or the saccule. Uh, we don't know which one it is. And we're going to zoom in on a particular part of the uh, utricle or saccule right here. It's called the macula. These are also hair cells with stereocilia. You can see them right here. And the stereocilia are connected to the otolithic membrane, which uh, is a membrane of these little rocks, basically. You can see a diagram of it here. Um, this is just upside down compared to uh, the virtual slide. And these autoliths are the uh, little stones that get displaced or loose uh, when you have benign positional vertigo. And uh, you can have you can attempt to do the Epley maneuver to try to uh, uh, bring them back. And another thing to note is that this fluid here is also endolymph. Uh, so I guess one thing you can remember is um, that the fluid that uh, hair cells, whether in, in the vestibular system or the um, the cochlea, it's, the fluid is endolymph. There are some other structures that the histo lab manual mentions, but it's not on our slides, so I'm not really going to go into it. Um, our PowerPoint does go over it uh, with some pictures, so you can take a look at that. The one thing I will mention is scarpus ganglion. So just like how in the cochlea the spiral ganglion is sending its axons into the cochlear nerve, the analogous structures for the vestibular system is scarpus ganglion uh, sending its axons into the vestibular nerve. And then the cochlear nerve and the vestibular nerve will combine together to make uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 8. And one more thing, the uh, lab manual does ask, what is this structure in the bottom right? Uh, seems like this is the flocculus of the cerebellum. And that's it. I'll catch you guys later.